Hello, my name is Joey Fuller, and today I'm going to be something different. Today I'm going to be upgrading this Dell Inspiron 1501 from Windows XP all the way to Windows 10. To do that, I'm first going to start with XP, then I'm going to upgrade to Vista, then upgrade Vista to 7, etc. until I get to Windows 10. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the Windows Vista installation disk now. Alright, here we go. Install now. We're going to select the upgrade option. And it's going to check the compatibility. I think it is going to be compatible though, since it's running XP Home Edition. And I'm going to be upgrading to Vista Home Premium. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Potential issues were detected. Well, even though it said potential issues were detected, it's still able to start the upgrade so I guess whatever issues those were were probably things like the default XP programs like pinball uh, that was a, a pinball game that came with like Windows 2000 and Windows XP that was not compatible with Windows Vista so maybe that's one of the things it was talking about anyway I'm gonna let this do its thing and I'm going to be back when this thing restarts Something I forgot to mention earlier, I created a little text document here to see if it would survive from XP to Windows 10, and uh, well, I guess I'll see when I finally get to Windows 10. Alright, so it's the first time it's rebooting itself, and it's going to continue the upgrade. Alright, so here's the first boot in Windows Vista. It looks like it kept the screen resolution that I had from Windows XP, which was 1024 by 768. So now let's see what programs and settings were kept from that XP installation. Well, the installation was successful, and it appears to have kept the screen resolution the same, and uh, these uh, windows, the Windows arrow theme, looks like it's already enabled which is kind of surprising. Sometimes you have to install drivers like here. It says, please install driver software for your base system device. Uh, sometimes you have to install drivers in order for Arrow to work. Well, I went to my documents and that uh, test document that I made from XP is still here, so that's a good sign. And uh, it seems like performance is actually better than XP was because um, I don't know why it's a little bit faster I guess like improvements in the operating system but it actually seems to uh, respond faster than XP did in this computer alright I went ahead and updated the display resolution so it's in 1280 by 800 now which seems to be the native resolution for this display and performance seems to be the same as before, so um, I'm pretty proud of that. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this to 7 now. And of course, it needs permission to upgrade to Windows 7. The user account control, I actually uh, forgot about that because I disabled it in... Uh, in Windows Vista before because it was just so annoying to use. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and install Windows 7 now. And of course we want to choose the upgrade option so that we can upgrade Windows. Hopefully it'll actually be compatible this time with all of the programs. And it is. It didn't even give us an error or anything. That is good. That is an improvement over Windows Vista. Alright, well this is the first time that the computer has restarted itself. I think it's going to go ahead and install the drivers and finish installing the operating system now. Alright, well it's on the last step for upgrading to Windows 7. And it appears to be working pretty well. Like, it's taken about half an hour uh, to get up to this point, which isn't too bad. It's definitely faster than Vista, which took about 45 minutes. 
And one thing I really like about Windows 7 in the setup process is this little, like, glowing orb thing. It reminds me of that uh, robot from the day the Earth stood still. The 1951 movie, not the 2008 movie. Alright, uh, the first time it's starting up here. And um, it, uh, it didn't keep the 1200 by 800 resolution. It looks like it's defaulted to 1024 by 768. So I'm going to have to see what else changed during the upgrade. Alright, well it did save the... Uh, the document that I had created in Windows XP, and um, you know, the time changed. It must have synced up with the network that I'm connected to. Also, um, notice that Windows Arrow is disabled. For some reason, that didn't uh, come over during the upgrade. And interestingly enough, the placement of the gadgets here in the side these are the gadgets that were in the Windows Vista sidebar, and they've been copied over to Windows 7 in the same location that they were before. And so I'm going to have to change the display resolution again and see if I can get Arrow working. Alright, so I figured out why Arrow wasn't working and why the display settings reset itself. Apparently the video card drivers aren't installed, so I'm going to have to use another computer and find those drivers. I also figured out why Arrow wasn't working. The base system device wasn't installed, and it wasn't installed in Windows Vista either. So I'm kind of surprised Arrow worked in Windows Vista, but not in Windows 7 without the base system device. So here's something interesting. I installed some updates and tried to install the base system device, and the computer restarted, and this little message came up. I have never seen this before in any version of Windows. So I unfortunately was not able to install a base system device, so uh, for now I'm going to give up on that and just go ahead and upgrade this to 8. Well here we go, Windows 8. Just going to install, or upgrade I guess. Yeah. Here we go. Alright, so this is interesting here. This is basically when Windows Vista and 7, when they said have the upgrade option or a full installation, this is basically replacing that, where it says keep personal files only. This is the upgrade option, and this is the full installation option. Or I guess, um, new installation option. So here's what the installation screen looks like. Instead of having that little box with several uh, lines of uh, text that said things like uh, installing Windows or copying files, expanding files, installing features and updates, it just says installing Windows 8.1, your PC will start several times. And it just has this one little, uh, I guess not even a progress bar, just one little percentage counter. Also from doing a little research I learned that when you install Windows 8 from Windows 7 the programs you had installed in Windows 7 will not actually migrate over to 8 only your documents and like pictures and videos but your programs you'll have to reinstall them which is a bit annoying. So this is really where Windows 8 gets a lot different than any other previous versions of Windows. For example, you can choose a, uh, a color that you want to be your main color on your computer. So the default it looks like it's purple. I'm going to choose, I think, uh, this uh, dark green color. And also, uh, Windows 8 is not very fast on this computer. So, I don't know how well Windows 10 is going to run on it, but uh, here's the text document that I created back on Windows XP, so um, that's still there. So now it's time to upgrade to Windows 10. Well, here we go, Windows 10. 
it's going to install and upgrade Windows 8 to Windows 10. As you can see, this looks very similar to the start of the Windows 8 setup where it says preparing and it's going to detect the devices on the computer and uh, what drivers are installed and uh, what files you have in programs. Here's something interesting. While it was preparing, it changed the uh, default color or changed the uh, color back to the default, which is purple. Before I had it set to green, and now it's purple. So, um, I guess it's loading all the uh, all the default things that Windows uses. Yeah, so this pretty much looks basically exactly the same as the Windows 8 setup screen. Yep, exactly like it. The only difference is the uh, version number. Windows 10. So this is what the Windows 10 installer interface looks like after it's restarted itself from that first screen we saw. Okay, so I finally got Windows 10 installed after like two or three different uh, installations that failed. It managed to finally install Windows 10. So here it is. It's installed. It, it doesn't really run very fast at all. Like I clicked File Explorer, normally it would just appear right away, and, well, it's not appearing, and I just press the Start key. There's the File Explorer, and there's the Start menu. So, it is possible to run Windows 10, but it is very slow and unresponsive. And, uh, well, I could have just clicked the Test Document right there, but, uh, yeah, here's the, uh, the document that I made back in Windows XP at the beginning of this video, it's still there. So, uh, yeah, it is possible to upgrade starting with Windows XP and then getting all the way up to Windows 10 on the same computer. And this is the same uh, hard drive partition that I made in XP. And, um, you know, it's, like I said, it's running really slow, but it is possible to run. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Joey. I'll see ya.